people for the evening of March 30th, 2021. Jennifer, would you read the roll? Polinski? Here. Stevens? Here. Stalker? Here. Crombie? Here. Guyant? Here. Jacobs? Here. Yokish? Here. McElroy? Here. We have all eight of our city council members with us, so we have a quorum and we are ready to move ahead. Would you please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, flag of the United, United States, 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 States of America and to, and to, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, under God, God indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. For all. First item we have for action this evening is the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve? I'll move to approve. Okay. Thank you. And a second? Did I hear a second? Yes. I'll just okay. Oh. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. And we'll move on to citizen, peer, uh, citizen appearances and public comment. Adam, we haven't received anything. Is there anybody out there to your knowledge? There is not. Thank you. So there's nobody there. I have nothing under business of the mayor. And now we're at committee reports. And what I'd like to do is move up item under from new business 9A B, resolution affirming the city of Sun Prairie's commitment to work with Metro Transit to implement a local spur of the bus rapid transit system to the Sun Prairie Park and Ride. Now, is, is Philip with us? Oh, there yes, he is. Yes. Okay. So, Philip, I hadn't seen you. I was thinking I'm moving this up and we don't have you. I'm getting this out of order. So, if you're agreeable to that, we'll move that item up and take it up next. So, what I'd like to do with this, I would like Philip to do his staff presentation, give us the overview. And there are people here from uh, Metro Transit. Tom and, uh, well, I see Ruben here. We know Ruben and, um, well, I saw somebody Mike, else. I can't Mike keep here. Mike. Yeah. So there are people here. And at the end of, of uh, Philip's report, if uh, you would like to have, if you have something you'd like to say to us, the three of you, then you're welcome to do that. Once we've completed that, I'm gonna ask Al if he's ready to make a motion to approve this. And then if we get a second, we'll go into discussion. And with that, I have asked Al to begin the discussion as your representative from the Transit Commission. And then after Al is done, then it'll be open for comments as you see fit. So if you're all satisfied with that, Philip, let's start with you. And then we'll see if Tom, Ruben, and Mike have things they want to add, or Tom, Ruben, and Mike can be available to answer questions as we go through this. So, Philip, take it away if you would. Sounds good. I put together a small, uh, a brief presentation for you uh, to go through the staff report. So, we're going to go through the background, uh, the, the the results of this of the discussions with Metro, a breakdown of the costs, what the service would look like. Uh, the potential for future local service, the pros and cons of BRT for Sun Prairie, and then ultimately the staff recommendation. So to start, uh, this, oops, sorry, this initially came to the council March 2nd, so it was fairly recent. And at that, uh, uh, this, uh, at that council meeting, uh, the question was asked, should we enter negotiations with Metro regarding the, the local extension of BRT and council approved that direction requesting more detailed cost estimates, a commitment prov to providing local bus service uh, in, in Sun Prairie when the city's ready for it and definitive information regarding federal funding. So after speaking with Metro, uh, we were told that the operations uh, of the BRT local spur to Sun Prairie would closely match those of the existing Route 23. That route is approximately $523,000 with a local share of a little over 100,000. So that was what, that's what we could expect for the BRT spur as well. Uh, Metro did let us know that a capital investment would be required to gain access to the BRT system. And that capital investment would include the purchase of one electric bus, 
and park and ride upgrades, including a charger and an all seasons restroom. Uh, if we were to work with Metro and become part of their locally preferred alternative, which is what FTA require, or refers to as the, the, uh, the actual system that they would implement, we would, would be eligible for 85% federal funding for all of our capital investments. And the reason this is coming before you so quickly is because Metro is, is, is submitting their locally preferred alternative to the Federal Transit in, uh, Administration imminently. So this is something that they would like to do as soon as they can. So the breakdown of costs is fairly simple. Uh, the, the electric bus would be $1.4 million. The park and ride upgrades, which would include the charger and the restroom are approximately $600,000. We would receive uh, from the federal government $1.3 million to offset 65% of those costs. And then uh, Metro would provide over 12 years depreciation uh, credits towards that electric bus for $490,000. So the net capital investment would be $210,000. So a, a brief overview of what the service would look like. So this would discontinue Route 23 and what we would get in return would be a, a BRT, an extension of the BRT, a local extension. So after uh, the BRT arrives at its final stop at East Springs on East Washington, it would go up high crossing and 151 towards the Sun Prairie Park and Ride. And so buses would be available every 30 minutes between 6 a.m. and 8 p.m. and hourly uh, between 8 uh, p.m. and midnight. This is roughly half of BRT service. So we would receive roughly 36 trips per day. Uh, those trips would be seven days a week, 365 days a year. That's in comparison to the, the eight trips we receive weekdays now. Uh, in addition, Metro has com committed to providing local all-day circulator uh, uh, access to and from the park and ride. Uh, this is something that we could implement whenever we're ready for it. And the cost of the route would be between $300,000 and $425,000 uh, per year before state aid. Uh, this would also, we would also need to contribute $35,000 for paratransit, which is required uh, for any uh, local bus routes. It would follow that, that same route. Uh, the service area. After state aid, we could anticipate that this would cost between $150,000 and 207000 less fare box recovery. Um, for comparison, the shared ride taxi is $1 million uh, prior to the state contribution and after well, we receive state aid and fare box recovery, it's $267,000. So it's, it's in, in the ballpark of, of the shared ride taxi. So in terms of the pros and cons of, of, of implementing BRT in the, in the city, the first, the pros, uh, it's a significant frequency improvement. Uh, like I mentioned, we re would receive over 30 trips a day as opposed to the eight, and we would receive them every day of the week. Uh, if we were to implement it now, we would be eligible for those, those, those federal capital offsets. That's not something that we could guarantee in the future. We would have to apply for other uh, federal uh, funds that are competitive. Um, the service would improve equity. Uh, in that it would provide weekday service, midday service, evening service, and, uh, and, and, and really expand the regional uh, connection between Sun Prairie and the rest of the region. Uh, we would have the ability to capitalize uh, costs uh, into our op that, that, that are normally included in our operating budget. So I mentioned that depreciation offset. Normally that's considered an administrative overhead cost, and that comes out of our operating budget with the deal that Metro is proposing we, we would have the ability to, to, to bond for that if we wanted to, because it would be considered a capital expense. Uh, the new buses would be all electric. Uh, that's part of the electric charger uh, that I mentioned. So the buses would be quieter and, and would uh, be a more sustainable solution than diesel buses. Uh, we have received a commitment from Metro to, to implement the local service. And uh, finally, the city owns two parcels at the edge of O'Keefe with, with Highway 151 views. With the improved bus service, the all-day bus service, it might improve the viability of the office-type uses that are planned for those lots. Uh, but there are cons associated with this as well. There is a significant capital cost to enter the service. Uh, our service area, the actual physical area that people would be able to access the system and interface with it, would decrease if we don't implement a local service. Uh, the, uh, so, uh, the, the, the bus charger that I mentioned would be a sunk cost. It's required for the service. There is no offset. It's just something we need to implement uh, to, to be able to have the BRT service at our park and ride. 
Uh, next, the restrooms, uh, those are already planned to be installed at the park and ride uh, through the Parks Commission and the Parks Fund. Uh, while we would be able to leverage some federal funding for the installation of that, the restrooms that we would be required to install are going to be significantly more expensive because they would be an all weather facility rather than uh, just the three seasons facility that was planned. And then finally, the additional capital investment into Metro will make uh, changes in service and uh, leaving the service that's ever desired significantly more difficult, which is just something to consider. So staff recommends pursuing uh, the, the local bus, uh, local BRT spur. Uh, it would provide a significant frequency uh, improvement over the existing uh, service that we have at uh, very similar operational costs once we get past the, the, the capital investment. Uh, it would provide equity enhancements and improvements for the city because of the availability of the service all day and on weekends. Uh, this might be our only time to, to qualify for that federal funding. So in the future, even if Metro were to allow us to enter the system, we might have to absorb the full cost of the infrastructure that would be required to do that, which would cost quite a bit. And then finally, uh, both Middleton and Fitchburg are, are, are planning on having, Middleton's gonna have a local spur into the, their community and Fitchburg would have a BRT connection. So we would be potentially the only major suburban community without a regional BRT connection if we did not uh, implement this. And with that, I'm available for any questions that anyone might have. Paul, you're on mute. I was gonna remember to unmute myself and then I forget right away. Um, I understand you offered to do questions, but let's see if, if Tom, Ruben, or Mike have anything they wanna add at this point in the in the presentation then i saw teresa i saw your hand up but i'd like to get in get the motion on the floor before we begin discussion so then we stay focused on that so tom i'll start with you you're the director of transportation for the city of madison anything you want to say to us yeah actually i was going to do some closing remarks but now Oh, okay. Well, be right in the beginning, but maybe you've got a you can do closing remarks. That's fine. We'll let um, you hold off, Tom. Okay, we, I'll, we I'll like, do closing remarks. We okay. like to move along. We like to move along. Yes, it's a <laughs> you're efficient. Yes, okay. it's a uh, fetish of mine. Ruben or Mike, were you going to do the same? Are you available for questions? Did you have something you wanted to say on the front end? I did not have closing remarks. That's very confident of you, Tom, to have closing remarks. But um, good to see everybody. Thank you. Glad yes. to be back. I just wanted to say this is, you know, this team thought through this really well. And um, there's a lot of moving pieces, uh, including Phil being part of that team and Aaron as well. And this is such an opportunity right now that's right about this time where all this federal money is moving around and we're really creating this regional system. So I wanna really highlight that, that it's not something that we can kind of put off till later. It's, it's really the opportunity right now, so. Okay. And Mike is with Metro Transit. Mike, did you have anything you wanted to say to us or? No, Phil did a great job. He, he Fine. Uh, did it perfectly, keep moving, keep okay. going. So with that, let's see, Al, let's see if there's a motion to we'll make a motion to get this into discussion. So is there a motion to approve? Yeah, uh, I move that we approve staff recommendation regarding the BRT and the lo local circulator uh, option in the future. All right. And then is there a second to that? Let's give a second to that. Yeah, can All I right. make a comment? Mary, so, yeah, then would you start us out with comments and then I'll open it up to whomever else. I've seen Teresa and Mike to this point and then Maureen. So okay. go ahead, Al. All right, so um, we might make an amendment that Ruben has to come back to work for us as a condition. I'm th I'll think about that then. But getting serious, you know, seven years ago, we ran, some of us ran and Paul ran and I ran. It was a commitment to transportation. Uh, Paul asked me to lead up the Transportation Steering Committee, and we got great ideas, and we had hopes, we had theories, and we said we need to be ready. We need to be ready and look for good breaks. The breaks are coming towards us, folks. The net $210,000 to get started um, is a more than affordable price. The value to this city, the value 
to our citizens to have seven day a week service, uh, more than 200 trips a week compared to 40 trips uh, for morning and afternoon. Uh, the value in, say, in the Smith Crossing alone is going to uh, offset that money. They're improving the house prices over there when people will be so close to, to that beginning. Um, so here we are seven years later, we're on the opportunity to really get going to mm -hmm. in the prairie at the beginning of the Northeast um, link to the rest of Madison and, and this Dane County Regional Transportation Area. Um, this is a very good deal. If I can steal Paul's favorite phrase, it's a big deal, it's a good deal. Um, and I have to take a little bit of ego. I'm excited for the opportunity to vote on this on my last meeting uh, on the council. So um, I enthusiastically uh, will very much uh, vote to approve this and uh, continue working out the details in the negotiations. Thank you. Thank you, Al. Teresa Stevens. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Philip, if you wouldn't mind pulling up the map for us again, that's where some of my concerns are at this time. And I just would really like the visual for everyone. Um, thank you. So what I'm seeing on here is that our park and ride really is the last stop. There is no real local service. Um, the, what I've seen on um, in the packet, the local service really is for the city of Madison on High Point Crossing Boulevard, um, which is probably very helpful to that area, but it's not servicing Sun Prairie. And my real concern with this is spending additional money and we're losing the loop in Prairie Lakes and we have no solutions to get people from their neighborhoods in Sun Prairie to other services in Sun Prairie. And that is a concern that was expressed for the last few years. And we've been told that we will get one um, it kind of feels like the sticking carrot again, um, where we have to rush into another deal and we still don't have those local connectors. We don't have the loops running in our community to really help those who don't have a vehicle. This continues to help those who regularly commute to Madison and that is certainly critical. Um, but. I, for one, if, I, if we're going to spend this kind of money, I want to really see a good solid plan for creating loops in Sun Prairie for Sun Prairie residents. Philip, do you want to address that? Yeah, so uh, we do have a local bus survey that is going to be going out this fall. That was going to go out earlier, but due to the pandemic, we've been delaying that, hoping that things are a little closer to normal when we're asking people the question of where would you like to get on? Are you interested in the service? And we have secured a commitment now from Metro. That's a new thing that hasn't been available to us before. And the main reason that we were able to secure that commitment is that they're opening up a Hanson Road facility uh, for, for bus storage, which is significantly closer to us uh, than uh, the, the East Washington location. It's close to the airport. So we do have that commitment now. and We would have years to get that implemented. Uh, I would look at this rather than a, a local service as, as the, the regional service, kind of the arterial through the area and our local connection would make that, 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 inter, that would interface with that, that regional connection. Um, I, I don't think that necessarily uh, the, the local connection on the, the circulator was something that was incredibly desirable. It was something that we did because uh, we had the hours available to us, the time available on the route. And the alternative would have been having the bus dwell at the park and ride for 20 minutes. So to be able to expand that service area and allow people to get on in front of their house was seen as desirable, but it still didn't serve necessarily local needs. You couldn't necessarily hop on in Smith's Crossing and get off at uh, you know, Target necessarily because uh, you'd only have a couple trips per day to do that. So I think that there will be the opportunity for that if we want to embark on that. And this is the first time we've had that commitment. All right, Mike Jacobs. Yeah, I have two questions. Starting first with Philip, you said that if we do not do this, we'll be the only, I'm not sure exactly what you said, the only significant size 
um, suburb to not do this. Can you give me a list again shortly of who is doing it and who is not? Sorry about that. My screen's kind of okay. shifting around. Uh, so okay. Middleton and Fitchburg will both have access to the BRT system. Um, those are the, the, the main two. Uh, so we, if we did not have access, we would be an outlier uh, amongst them. Amongst just those two communities. Okay. Um, my next question is for um, either Connie or Aaron, which is um, Philip mentioned that we can do this. Um, we can bond for this. Is there any advantage to not doing that? Uh, there is, uh, Alder Jacobs, this is uh, Aaron out to answer that one, is uh, our proposal would be to fund this either two ways. One is if the city council, as you know, we dis discussed our five-year financial management plan uh, with you at the last meeting, and one of the recommendations from us was to uh, look at breaking re expenditure restraint in 2022. At that point, we could move money from fund balance uh, to, to cover this expense. Uh, the other option, if we weren't uh, to uh, break expenditure restraint, would be to use expenditure restraint grant dollars uh, and apply them. Um, so we likely would not be borrowing much um, to do this project. We assumed around $80,000 roughly uh, 80 to 100 thousand dollars that we would actually borrow for and that's more for the infrastructure around the park and ride uh, versus the the bus service because we are able to use park impact fees uh, for for a portion of the the project since this will be a trailhead so that's where the the park impact uh, fee dollars come into play um, so very small amount would be borrowed All right, Maureen. Thank you, Your Honor. So I had similar similar questions that Alder Stevens had. Um, but, you know, we have to remember this is a, I think, long term. This is a long term decision that we're making. And I am wondering, I'm a little, maybe Philip will have to explain this to me, but um, the bus route that we currently have right now, that are we from my understanding the route the the b or the um the brt route is actually not going to go through o'keefe or is it? it it would not it would sever the local service from the regional so okay. it would uh, stop at the park and ride okay and i understand when it comes to equity with the seven days a week and you know what that that's that's wonderful um however my concern is the equity when it comes to people that really need this service, other neighborhood, you know, going out to other neighborhoods, the other routes. How can you like elaborate on, you know, when we're going, when we would be able to, I know you said you're sending out a survey, but do you have any idea? Because I would hate to have that route we currently have right now just disappear. And um, so can you elaborate on that for me? Can I add before, Philip, before you respond, if I could help a little bit with, with this, um, help the city council with this is the BRT service. And I think Philip mentioned it kind of as that collector, that arterial, think of BRT kind of as the backbone of, of our service coming into the city. Um, it's really separate from the internal network, the circulator route. Um, they're really two different items and it, it gets complicated because we have that little circulator on our service right now that Philip has kind of explained was kind of a, almost like a leftover, right? There was hours available and, and, and we made it work. Uh, but the BRT is the backbone of, of the service going into Sun Prairie we can add in at the city council's desire local service that has destinations wherever we would like. So if there's destinations that the city council feel are important for folks to travel within the community. So for example, high school students to get to Prairie Lakes for an after school job, so to speak. Um, seniors to from uh, Colonial View and Colonial Club to a, a uh, area where there's a lot of medical facilities so that they can get to appointments. We can design that how we would like 
with destinations that we would like. Um, it's really a separate piece of this uh, from the BRT discussion. Where the BRT comes in is it allows a resident to go from Sun Prairie all the way over to West Town Mall in one seat without, without transferring um, and having that service available to them throughout the day instead of just peak times and also on weekends instead of just weekdays. Um, so the BRT service really makes that connection for us to the other areas in the region. That local service, we can design however we would like, whatever destinations we would like, whatever intervals that we would like. Obviously, there's a cost associated with that, but Madison Metro has been very accommodating uh, to us in saying that uh, they could make that service work to, to meet our needs. And so even though they're kind of all kind of connected, they're really two separate matters uh, for, for consideration. And, and so I hope that that helps. Yeah, that does. Mm -hmm. the, um, the American Parkway, the, the route that they have there now, so maybe this is Madison Metro that can answer this for me. Do you, can you tell me, are you still going to continue with that same route what, if we do approve this BRT to go you know, to American Parkway? Are you still gonna have that, that, that other route too? And I believe that's just a short term or that's just a, a, a route that's only open certain times of the day too. Uh, so what we're doing is we're taking, we're, we're removing routes 23 and 26. 26 is the other route that goes through American Center, and we're replacing it with this BRT service. Um, and so that's one of the reasons that the Sun Prairie service would go through the high crossing area, because that was, that was one of the areas served by Route 26. So that's just kind of a detail of how things are being shaken up and recombobulated. Uh, but... So, so anyway, Route 26 operates all day, every day, every 30 minutes. Uh, and so the BRT, the BRT route would, would, would be pretty much a straightforward one-to-one -one replacement. Um, it gets a little bit complicated because the BRT service runs every 15 minutes, not every 30 minutes. And so it's convenient because we need something to do with every other bus. Um, we don't okay. want to run every bus through American Center because it doesn't need to be there. Yeah. I didn't realize that I didn't realize that it ran every 30 minutes because at one time it was only like four or five times a day, but that uh, was back so we, in the 90s. <laughs> okay, yeah, so so we had another route that went up there is Route 25, and that was just a rush hour route that was really designed. Oh, maybe to that's the one I'm thinking of. That out in the okay. morning to American Family, but okay. that has been running for about a year. Because I actually remember working in Madison and thinking, how can I get there if I don't have a car? And it just didn't work out at that time for me because of the timing of the bus route. But, um, and then I had one other, I know that we had talked about um, in the past, we've talked about the own, having our own bus system um, in Sun Prairie, so, similar to like how Monona does. And um, I'm just wondering, like, if we, I mean, this is just something I'm just throwing out. Um, it's not that I don't support what this, that we what we're doing here in Madison Metro, but if we did do that, would we not be able to take our buses into Madison? Is there something about not taking the buses into Madison, or that we wouldn't be allowed to? Or no, I believe we would be probably able to, the routes yeah, would be. Yeah, I believe we would be able to do that if we operated that that way, Alder Crombie. Uh, what well, the direction we've been operating under uh, from a city staff perspective, because we felt that this is where the council was, so we're happy to, to receive guidance, mm -hmm. is that we, yeah. there was a significant benefit to be being part of a larger network, larger op options for folks to travel and to have that regional perspective, right, where it's all, it's all connected uh, and that our mm -hmm. residents would uh, find it desirable to be able to get to locations outside of Sun Prairie easily, um, such as the airport, West Town Mall, wherever it might be where they, where, where they would need to go, that there was a, a significant benefit to being part of that larger network that Madison Metro provides. To, to add on to that, uh, we did receive uh, a 
prior to the pandemic information about our riders and how they are interfacing with our service. And roughly 45% of our riders had Metro passes. Um, so they were receiving that from their employers or their school. So we, we know that there's a strong desire for Metro service from that perspective. Okay. And then um, Alder Jacobs had mentioned, he had asked about the other communities that, um, that in one of them was Fitchburg and Middleton that have this, um, the, that do have this uh, BRT. Um, and is Verona one of them too or not? Because that's, that's in one of the major, one of the bigger cities in Dane County. No, they, they, they do not have access to the system. They do have their uh, commuter bus to Epic, but that uh, uh, there aren't any plans to bring that to the BRT to- the Verona area, okay. Okay, okay, that's all I have right now. Mike Jacobs, I saw your hand up again. Yeah, this is a question from Mike. I just want to know in your estimate, how successful was bus route number 25? 25 to American Center. Um, uh, it had very low levels of service, but the, but it had a decent number of people using it. I don't have numbers off the top of my head, but I have seen, um, you know, it always had sort of a, a comfortable seated load. Um, uh, you know, our our office is on, on the near east side. So uh, if a bus drives out east wash, I usually notice. Um, uh, it, it had, it had, it had, you know, it had decent ridership for, it only had two trips a day. It had two going out in the morning and two coming in in the evening. So the, 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 the overall ridership was very low, um, but you know, it was, it was sort of okay. Harry McElroy. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Philip, this question is for you. Um, what information or data can you give me on the ridership um, prior to the pandemic? I can share my screen and, and show you that. Let me know if you can see my screen. I can, thank you. Okay, so uh, prior to the pandemic, we were receiving, uh, we got up to 20, uh, 2,693 uh, rides per month. And you see that since the pandemic has hit and the state offices have been closed, ridership has is, is dropped off quite a bit. Uh, it has been going up slowly, uh, kind of an ebb and flow, but until the state offices re resume uh, in-person operation, I would, I would imagine that that would remain low. Uh, that said, uh, the, 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 the ridership was, was strong from the beginning. Uh, on our peak days, we were seeing 75% utilization of the park and ride, generally towards the end, uh, uh, I guess, of the, the normal times. Um, it was over 50% capacity most days. Okay, thank you. Um, and my second question is, actually, it's not a question, it's a statement. Um, there is no guarantee moving forward that once COVID is over, that people are going to go back to their offices. I mean, here in the city of Sun Prairie, we've actually talked about um, possibly some individuals who are employees not coming back to the building every day. So, you know, I would think that the same thing is going to happen with other businesses. And I do know for a fact that my, even my daughter-in-law will be working from home 95% of the time once the pandemic is over. That's going to affect the ridership going into Madison. And I, I'm hoping everybody is considering that. Thank you. Bob Jokish. Uh, I just wanted to mention as far as ridership, uh, I retired from the UW three years ago and for the 10 years prior to that, I was driving to East Town and uh, taking the bus into the university. Uh, largely, uh, one important factor was, and I think Philip mentioned this, was the subsidy that the university provided for buses to uh, bus travel. And I think some of, uh, if, if I'm not, uh, wrong on this, I think Dane County and maybe some other large employers provide that. So, you know, I, there was a number of people that were doing the same thing I was in the past of driving down to the East Town area from Sun Prairie and then picking up the bus along the way there somewhere. So uh, I think there's a great deal of, uh, of interest in this in the Sun Prairie area. 
Steve Stocker. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Excuse me. My comments are going to be similar to Alder Stevens. And again, uh, I guess I have to start out with, here we go again. Last minute. We need to do this or else we're going to lose it. Have we heard that before? We need to put in a park and ride immediately. and We pay twice as much for it or we lose it. I, I don't know. I just have a real problem with Metro. Um, I have from Trust Factor and raising their costs from before. I've said it before and I'm going to get off that soapbox now. But as far as this proposal goes, you know, I looked at this. I love, love the thought of electric buses. I think that's the way to go and I think it's the future. But I just think the timing is not right for this. I think the timing in the future is going to be so much better. And to hear if we don't act on this now, we're going to lose federal funding. It's never going to be here again. I don't believe it. Federal funding seems to be there almost every year. So I don't, I don't, I guess I don't subscribe to that theory. Almost like uh, buy this car now or else you're going to lose it. You know, we promised that we would do a, uh, at least in some of our campaigns, we would do a bus or some type of service to get our folks into Madison. Our good was getting them into East Town. Better was getting them down to the Capitol. So I look at this right now, is this a need or nice to have? When we look at all the other priorities in our budget, to me, this is strictly a nice to have. This is not a need. And like Alder Stevens said, this doesn't hit any of my district. And so why would my constituents want this? You know, whether it's a future thing, we've heard about that too. The carrot's been hanging out there. This could be a future item. Prove this now. This will be in the future. We haven't seen anything. And so I don't subscribe to this. I don't, you know, when I look at it, you know, as I would look at my own personal budget, I would love an electric car. But do I have other priorities? Certainly. I'm sure some of you have other priorities also. College education for your kids or grandchildren. You put aside that electric car. I think the timing is wrong. I think we have other priorities that we should wait until the priorities we've earmarked are there until we proceed. Okay. Um, Terry McElroy. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would tend to follow exactly what Alder Stocker just said. Um, I do have a question for Philip. Are we guaranteed this um, federal funding, this federal grant at the, to the tune of 65% of the overall costs? Correct. That's, that's the reason for moving now. Uh, if we're part of that locally preferred alternative, we get a guaranteed 65% federal funding. In the future, we very well might be eligible for federal funding, but it would be a competitive process and there's no guarantee that we would get it uh, and no guarantee that we would be admitted into the system. Okay, thank you very much. El Gallant, I saw your hand up. So correct me if I'm wrong, Philip, but I believe the past data shows that more than 5,000 Sun Prairie residents drive into central Madison or the west side every weekday to work, 5,000. Um, and many of those would benefit from the BRT. The local circulator, I hope those of you who will be on the council when that's designed, could connect to the park and ride. And that's not the only local circulator. I believe as this community grows, we'll have more local circulators mm -hmm. and we should push for that. But 5,000 folks could benefit some of those marginal income um, they would drive their cars mm -hmm. short ways and get on a bus and save a lot of money from not parking downtown. And, you know, I'm with all of you wanting that local circulator to serve folks. That's always been my goal. So this is going to be a huge benefit for some prairie of all income levels, particularly if we get the local cir circulator there. So thank you. Steve Stocker. Thank you, Your Honor. If we're talking 5,000 people driving in, why are we only looking at 25 people a day riding on this? I looked at the number, if it's 500 per month, that's 125 a week and 25 per day, Monday through Friday. 25 people per day, and we're investing this amount. Is that, I mean, is that true, Philip? Yeah. That, that's correct. The service was still in its infancy. Um, one of the things that uh, I mentioned initially early on when uh, Route 23 was established is we really can't 
uh, look at the ridership with any level of certainty for two years when people are able to make their lifestyle choices around the service, feel confident that it's going to be there. And the pandemic has certainly thrown a wrench in, into some of that thought process there. Uh, so uh, from the ridership that we saw from a service that was in an infant, its infancy, uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was strong. Um, it would have certainly improved over time if things would have had down, headed down the same path. And a follow-up question. Um, Alder McElroy asked a great question about the federal funding. So if we approve what we approve tonight, we do not have a guarantee. Is that correct, that we will have federal funding? No, no, we do have a guarantee that we have federal funding if it's, if it's approved tonight. They will pay 65%. Correct. That's the advantage of going now versus later. Uh, we would have to enter competitive programs in the future. Okay, thank you. Mike Jacobs. I, I agree with Alder Stocker on almost all of his points, except one, which is I'm not willing to roll the dice and miss this opportunity of the 65% and not counting on being able to get that money later. Um, if, if we don't think that mass transit is the wave of the future, then I think that we've been wrong about all the other things that we've been talking about. And then for that reason, I'm in support, reluctant support, but support nonetheless. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else? Well, I want to say that to me, this is all about the future. If we were only looking at Sun Prairie for a year from now or five years from now, I'd say the same thing. And if we thought Sun Prairie wasn't going to grow, it was, there'd be no need to make this kind of investment. Certainly, we wouldn't be interested in the BRT link by itself. And even now, we wouldn't be interested in the BRT link if we couldn't connect it with the local circulator. But we have before us a package of services that will meet the needs of this community far into the future. When we have meetings and, and Mayor Rhodes Conway from Madison is talking to us, she tells us about how it is going to get so congested in downtown Madison because jobs are going to continue to grow there. It'll be the heart of the county. You won't be able to afford to park your car down there. So what we're doing tonight isn't for the Sun Prairie of 2022 or even 2026. We're looking at the Sun Prairie of the future. And why should we feel that way? Well, they're telling us that if we're going to be 50,000 people in less than 20 years, we're 36,000 now, and likely that 50,000 number is light, and it'll, it'll be something more than that. That's the community that we need to provide for, and we need to have the foresight to do this. This has come to us as soon as Metro Transit chose to go out on, on Hanson in the uh, uh, FedEx uh, distribution center that suddenly opened BRT up for us. I see this as a great opportunity we need to preside, pro provide for and take advantage of. And we haven't mentioned the metro, the uh, paratransit. So if we do the circulator, then we commit to or forced to commit to, to paratransit. But there's a whole lot of people in this community that we hear about that are struggling to get around because of mobility limitations and our existing shared ride taxi doesn't provide as well for that as we needed to. So that is another advantage of this in meeting our people in the community that don't always have the resources to solve these problems on their own, and they rely on us to do it. So it's no surprise to you that I would support this. You knew this coming into it this evening, and if I have the opportunity to vote on this, of course, I will vote in support of this. I, I think this, is, this has come our way from some fortuitous circumstances, and I celebrate that opportunity that comes to us. I'm so pleased that Madison and Metro Transit keeps us in mind and keeps looking to us and, and helping. So with that, I believe we're ready to take a vote. If anybody else has a last comment, this is your opportunity. I see none, so we now have our, our city uh, clerk representative with us. Jennifer, would you please read the roll? Polinski? Aye. Stevens? No. Stalker? No. Crombie? 
Uh, You're on mute. Sorry about that. I. Gayant. Aye. Jacobs. Aye. Yokish. Aye. McElroy. No. So it passes five to three. So, Philip, we didn't mention this earlier, but we ought to clarify what we're doing tonight. This is sending a message to Metro Transit that we want to be part of it. But at this point, we have not executed a contract. We aren't asking City Council to do that tonight, are we? That, that is, that's correct. So this would uh, signal to Metro that we would like to be part of their locally preferred alternative. So they would add us to their submittal package to the FTA. Um, so we would be eligible for that federal funding. They have requested that uh, we uh, sign a third party agreement, which is an FTA agreement committing to the service no later than May 31st. Okay. That would be so coming before the council soon. For the council, probably at their second meeting in May. And then once we do that, we're committed? Correct. Okay. All right. Very good. Well, thank you, Tom Lynch. Tom and I are on the MPO together, so I get to see him there frequently in this format. Reuben, of course, it's always a pleasure to see you back with us again. Hope everything is well with you. And Mike used to be with the MPO, weren't you, Mike? Or with Carpsey? You were with uh, the Carpsey. MPO. Yep. MPO, yep. and then went to, to uh, Metro. So thank you, Mike, for being with us as well. Oh, oh, Tom, you wanted some closing. Do you want to make them now after we voted? Yes, and that maybe you ought to leave well I, enough. I wish alone. I had made them sooner because I. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Uh, I just want to uh, kind of reinforce that we value Sun Prairie as a partner. You know, when someone that lives in Sun Prairie uh, makes a trip to their job, let's say on Greenway Cross in Fitchburg, they go across four different uh, jurisdictions, right? But they don't think about, oh, now I'm in you know, the town of Blow Green Grove, or now I'm in the town, city of Madison. They just think I'm going to work and I'm going home, right? And that job benefits the region and where they live benefits the region. And yet, because of the way our, our state government works, we have to, we're forced to look at this not as a regional um, opportunity, but more as individual. We have to piece it together. And uh, what Metro's done is we've pieced together partnerships and, and we really value Sun Prairie as a partnership. Um, we believe that the, um, the equity considerations, you know, many of the, uh, the people, um, you know, I was just speaking with someone who's from Ghana, you know, at one of our transfer points and he was going to, to serve a senior, he was doing senior care, right? And uh, he, it was in the middle of the day. Because a lot of our, uh, a lot of the people that need transit, you know, work in the middle of the day or at night, and uh, he was providing a service, right? And then he's paying taxes, and transit was helping to make the connection between the service and and uh, taxes. And so, as you as you're being part of our partnership, um, you know, we appreciate the the service we can provide to you, but we also appreciate that we we're connecting people with other people and other services and that's important just in, in, in itself good thank you thank you Tom. all right we are going to move on so we will be back to committee reports and now Teresa we're going to do personnel committee yes thank you Mr. Mayor um, at tonight's meeting at five o'clock we uh, passed a resolution approving the contract for recruitment services this is for the vacant position of our um, economic so, development yes, job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're replacing Neil. So. Yeah. Um, this we we're bringing it forward to council to approve for this. All right. So you're making the motion, Teresa. I'll make the motion to approve. McElroy second? seconds. Thank you, Terry. And discussion on this item. Is there any? Be none. Jennifer, let's get the roll. I'm just his hand up. Oh, oh Alder Polinski, you're on mute. Whoops. Hi. Stevens? Hi. Stalker? Hi. Crombie? Hi. Guyant? Hi. Jacobs? 
I'm voting aye, but I just want to make clear on the motion. There is no replacing Neil Steck Schulte. <laughs> aye. Jokish? Aye. McElroy? Aye. And that passes 8-0. And now we'll move down to Public Works. And Maureen, we've got a few of them down here. Yes, we do, but I'll refer you over to Alder Stocker. I don't know why I did that, Steve. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> okay. I know yeah. you're the chair. Yeah, yeah sorry. So let me the... rephrase this. We're moving on to public work. Steve, would you do these for us? Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, sorry. I, first item on the agenda for uh, our public works tonight is speed limits. And this is an ordinance repealing and recreating section 10.12.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
Um, I'm concerned about the enforcement issue because I fear that it will damage relationships between the police and the people who live in the element and that um, and that vicinity. And to suggest that cars going too fast is the only problem is to completely ignore the jaywalking problem that is as significant or more significant than the speeding. So I think people from the element have been involved in the committee, have they not? Aaron and, and uh, Adam? Uh, Barry, uh, we were talking with Barry on Friday. He'd been part of it. He'd given you some advice, he said, Adam. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, so I'm not sure that there aren't. Are there others, um, Aaron, that are citizen members? I think Adam's been part of that. I'll let him, him answer the and okay. all my questions. Maybe but, Steve's uh, got some input on that. He's anxious to talk. Yeah, there was actually, um, and to address Alder Jacobs' uh, question, there's actually a meeting of police and public works at the element. Um, they brought lunch out and talked to the residents and um, on board with it. It's just, uh, you, but you are correct. Um, jaywalking is a problem. Um, but there again, this is to address just one part of the problem. And I think speeding is part of it. If we can slow the vehicles down, it makes it easier or makes it, I give you, you give the uh, opportunity of pedestrians to get out of the way much quicker than if cars are going much faster. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of parts to this puzzle, Mike, I, I would agree. And there will be citizen input. This is just part of it. Well, if there has been citizen input, it's completely contrary to everything that I've been told has happened and was going to happen. I know Barry's been involved with it, Mike. <clears throat> we were with him and he was telling me that he had had a hand in it, had provided feedback. So, and he's also a neighbor navigator, neighborhood navigator. So maybe you don't think of him as strictly a community person, but he lives in that community, the element, and is right there. So, Al, did I see your hand up? You did. You did. Um, so, I'm glad you're getting these speed uh, uh, response signs. I had urged the council to buy them in bulk in the past. I repeat that. Buy a bunch of them. But let me go to, Steve wants to do algebra. And in safety, not that I'm Adam's expert, but I'll talk like I am anyway. The most important one is design. The second one is education. And the third most expensive, at least effective, is enforcement, because we can't afford 15 cops throughout the city to meet the, so I will once again urge the future council to look seriously at speed humps. Many communities are using them. Sheridan Avenue in Madison has seven of them. Speeding disappeared. They don't have to enforce it at all. Not the speed bump that Mary and I saw a couple of years ago that lasted one day on Thompson. That, that was put you right through the roof of your car. But speed humps, like on over at um, um, Westmount, not Westmount. Um, Thompson, I wasn't it? Heatherstone, isn't it? Over, over on, the, on in, in my district that I know so well, I forget to. Anyway, you can watch that and then people slow down because they know that hump is coming. That's there 24 hours a day. It's not the $100,000 cop that you're gonna have writing tickets. So look at speed humps. We'll slow your traffic down automatically. Thank you, done. Yeah. And Ms. Anything more on this item? Ms. Mr. Mayor, if I could just uh, mention a couple things. One is there was some things that the pedestrian safety task force wanted to tackle immediately and get some, some things addressed. Um, and one of them is looking at the speed on uh, Main Street and the change that we're proposing is consistent with engineering looking at the speed limit and uh, assessing it. Um, and so those are things we think we could tackle quickly and make change uh, and improve the safety quickly. We have involved the neighborhood navigators, as you mentioned, Mayor, we've also involved the district liaison officers who are out in the community. Uh, we also have, the committee has a uh, public relations plan, uh, how to engage the community. We have a website uh, space up for this as well and the ability for folks to interact with us and communicate with us. We've also received emails from residents who wanted to be involved in the, in the discussions as well. So I guess I wanted to make sure the city council was aware that there's 
going to be short term, medium term, long term uh, solutions uh, you know involved here, uh, and this is one that we could support. Uh, from a technical standpoint, as far as the reduction in the, the speed limit. But there's also other things that are going to be forthcoming, like uh, crosswalk improvements that need to be made on Main Street. And so we will be, you know, continue to have discussions with residents about that. So I guess I wanted to make sure we, you know, gave a, a full discussion around that. Okay. Steve? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. I just want to Thank Adam Schleicher for heading this up and ask Adam, do you have any additional comments before we vote? You're on mute. I do not. Thank you, though. Okay. Thank you. All right. Jennifer, let's get the roll. Polinsky. Aye. Stevens. Aye. Stalker. Aye. Crombie. Aye. Guyant. No, because it doesn't have speed humps. <laughs> Jacobs? No, for a different reason. <laughs> Jokish? Aye. McElroy? Aye. Is that everybody, Jennifer? That so is. It passes six to two. All right. Thank you. Okay. So, next, next item? Yeah. Approved budget amendment and award contract 21001 North Bird. West Main Pedestrian Improvements and Museum Sidewalk. On March 23rd, the Public Works Committee met to review the award contract of, for 21001. Contract was awarded based on a budget amendment for uh, work to be done on Bird Street Concrete Pavement, West Main uh, Street Pedestrian Improvements and the Museum Sidewalk Project. Um, I would like to make a motion to approve. All right. Alder McElroy seconds. And we're into discussion on this item. Any discussion? I don't see anybody. Jennifer, let's do it. Polinsky? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Stalker? Aye. Crombie? Aye. Guyant? Aye. Jacobs? Aye. Jokish? Aye. McElroy? Aye. So it passes 8-0. Thank you. Next item, budget amendment and award of contract 21003 for the Miller Street Trap Street reconstruction. Again, on March 23rd, the Public Works Committee met to discuss contract 21003 to uh, award the contract and there was a budget amendment uh, for some additional um, borrowing for the sanitary sewer and it was approved unanimously, and I would like to make a motion to approve. Polinsky will second it. All right, and we're into discussion. Is there any discussion on this item? I don't see any, let's get the roll. Polinsky? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Stalker? Aye. Crombie? Aye. Guyant? Aye. Jacobs? Aye. Jokish? Aye. McElroy? Aye. And it passes 8 -0. Okay, next item, budget amendment for contract 21005, payment rehabilitation. Again, on March 23rd, you know, the Public Works Committee has been busy. Public Works met to talk about and vote on a resolution approving a contract and budget amendment for contract 21005 for the 2021 pavement rehab project. There was uh, a need for um, a budget amendment because again, storm sewer uh, was for the budget. Of, it was in the budget amendment for uh, storm sewer changes. So with that, I would like to make a motion to approve. McElroy mm -hmm. seconds. All right, so we've got a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on this item? I see none. Let's get the roll. Polinsky? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Stalker? Aye. Crombie? Aye. Guyant? Aye. Jacobs? Aye. Jokish? Aye. McElroy? Aye. And that item passes 8 0. Now we're on to the Community Development Authority, Bob. So we've 
got a resolution to approve budget amendment for the housing study and strategic uh, housing study and strategy and, a, and awarding a contract to Lakota Group of Chicago, Illinois. Alder Yokish, I'd be glad to take this one if you'd like me to. Sure. Okay. Yes. Um, so uh, I think you're all aware of the, the fact that we budgeted uh, some funds for the, a housing study in the 2020 budget. Uh, those funds coming out of TIF 8 and TIF 11. Um, last, late last year, we issued the RFP. We had seven responses. Uh, we narrowed that down to four finalists that came into the CDA for presentations. And after discussion with the CDA and the scoring after the, the presentations, the Lakota Group and SB Friedman were selected as the, the team to move forward. Uh, we feel this is a strong team. Uh, both firms have good reputations and we had a good experience with Lakota recently on the Sun Prairie Stronger Plan. So we're excited about working uh, with them on the project. Um, base, the base contract uh, that the Lakota bid on was uh, just under our $60,000 budget, but there was an alternative bid that we had worked into the RFP to look more closely at four neighborhoods in the city, South Bird Street, Vandenberg, the Element and Schiller Street areas. Um, and this kind of came out of some discussions that the uh, city staff had had with uh, the school district recently concerns about high turnover in these neighborhoods, housing conditions, rental practices, and so forth. So we're, we want to do a little deeper dive into those four neighborhoods to um, to be able to I guess gather more information about them and then work uh, some strategies uh, into our overall housing strategy for dealing with those neighborhoods as well. Uh, so that alternative bid um, that was submitted by Lakota came in at just over $20,000. Uh, and for that piece of the project, we will need a budget amendment, and that's uh, wrapped into the uh, resolution that's in, in front of you this evening. Um, we are proposing that that come out of fund balance and working with finance. Uh, uh, they note that that will help maximize our position with respect to the expenditure restraint program for next year. Um, so the CDA reviewed the contract itself last Thursday, talked through the project, and recommended approval. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have uh, regarding the contract or the process this evening. Okay, so we need a motion, Bob. Maybe you want to make the motion to approve. So do we need uh, a separate motion for the budget also, or? We've Did wrapped you... it into one resolution. One resolution. So okay. uh, move to approve the uh, resolution presented. Jacob seconds. seconds. All right, so we've got a motion and a second. Now we're into discussion. If you've got questions for uh, Scott, we've got them here. Being no questions, we will go ahead with the vote, Jennifer. Polinski? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Stalker? Aye. Crombie? Aye. Guyant? Aye. Jacobs? Aye. Jokish? Aye. McElroy? Aye. And that passes 8-0. Thank you very much. Yeah. Now we are on to Parks, Recreation, and Forestry Commission. And this time, Maureen, I have it right. Yes, you do. So this might be one of the easiest decisions that we've had to make tonight. So basically, staff was recently informed of the passing of Marlene Heyer, a retired Sun Prairie English teacher and Sun Prairie resident. Marlene generously gave us an amount of $40,770.40 to the Sun Prairie Parks and Forestry Division. This money is available immediately and does not bear any restrictions on its use. And the Parks and Recreation and Forestry Commission feels that the funding should be utilized for items within our park system that provide a high level of benefit to as many community members as possible. Staff has identified two specific projects to utilize the donation for, uh, a community garden project in Vandenberg Heights Park and a public art program within the park system. So staff would like to move forward on both of these projects and um, forward in the current fiscal year, which would require a budget amendment in the amount of $40,771 in the special revenue grants and donations account. Uh, we met on this on March 24th and unanimously we voted to recommend the acceptance of this generous donation and the subsequent budget 
amendment for its use in the 2021 fiscal year. And I'll make a motion that we recommend the um, acceptance of this generous donation. McElroy seconds. All right, now we're into discussion on that. Uh, Terry? I just want to share with you all, I did not know that she passed away. She was my English teacher. <laughs> wonderful human being. Absolutely wonderful human being. Strict as all get out. Um, always on you if you did not perform the way she knew you could perform. And she was also my pew buddy in church um, up until the pandemic. I did not know that she passed away. Thank you. Thank you. I Carrie. heard some really good things about her. She was great. Any other discussion on this item? Steve? Uh, is this going to go along with like a, hopefully like a naming rights to the garden or whatever? I would, I would hope that her name gets promoted in there somehow. Yeah, we had talked about that in the um, Parks, Recreation, and Forestry Commission. So Kristen is, knows about that. And she agreed with us too. So I can, I'll make sure to make sure that Kristen is going to do something about that, but I'm sure she is. Good. Thank you. I don't know if Kristen's on tonight, but. Yes, she is. is. She's down the bottom square on my screen. Yeah. Kristen's right here with us. So she's nodding her head in agreement with you, Maureen. Okay. All right. So no other discussion on this. Let's get the roll. Polinsky. Aye. Stevens. Aye. Stalker? Aye. Crombie? Aye. Guyant? Aye. Jacobs? Aye. Yokish? Aye. McElroy? Aye. That passes 8 0. And then we are moving down to new business. And we have item A under action required, and then small a resolution approving temporary outdoor dining facility with alcohol adjacent to Full Mile Beer Company and Kitchen through October 20th, 2021. So Scott, does this take any uh, explanation or Tim is on here, one of you two, or is it clear with just what it says, Tim? This, this should be fairly straightforward. We had reached out to the five operators who had done this previously. We had heard back from a couple of them and uh, Nathan with Full Mile was the only one who had pursued this. So it's it's a pretty straightforward request operating through October 20th. Okay, all right. So if we can get a motion to approve this. Move to approve. Somebody make a motion. Thank you, Bob, because you've been interested in this. Is there a second on I'll that second motion? It. Thank you, Maureen. So now we're in discussion on the motion. Is there any discussion? I see none. Jennifer, let's get the roll. Polinsky? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Stalker? Aye. Crombie? Aye. Guyant? Aye. Jacobs? Aye. Yokish? Aye. McElroy? Aye. And that passes 8-0. So now we are down to referrals to the Committee of the Whole. Are there, Steve? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. And I see Kristen is still on, Kristen Grissom. Um, I'd, like to, I'd like to address this kind of to probably Parks and Forestry and Marine. Um, tonight you saw on the consent agenda a order for, for trees. And average cost, I believe, came in at like around $150 per tree. My referral is to possibly look, I mean, to look into the possibility of having our forestry person um, actually start a, like a nursery. Um, we have plenty of land, whether it's a park or the new uh, land that we just bought up by the wastewater treatment plant and look at putting in some of the more popular seedlings and nurturing them and in the future when we need trees for a street project, um, actually it could be a personal touch. People could go out and uh, like they pick a Christmas tree, pick the tree they want and have it delivered to their yard. I think it would uh, add a lot of pers personal uh, touch to it. Plus, I mean, when you extend the cost out for the number of trees we go through a year, I think uh, as a revenue or an expense saving to the city, I think this, uh, 
might be a good possibility to buy the trees when they're young. We have plenty of, especially out by the wastewater treatment plant, it's very wet out there. I think they would grow well, if not too fast. And uh, I'd like to make that referral. All right. Any other referrals? I see none. Then we're on to announcements. Any announcements? Just like to thank Alder Guyan again for your service. Yeah. Al, this is your final meeting, so we've all appreciated you. Thank you. Thank you. We've got Tina Bowling with us this evening, so we'll expect to see her at our next meeting on April 20th. All right. So with that, and Mike no, has no. a Mike has one. Well, Mike, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to um, announce that starting on Thursday is National Hmong Month in uh, and um, the Hmong are the largest Asian population in Wisconsin. So hopefully we'll be able to see some things happen with that this month. All Thank right. you. All right, good. Well, a motion to adjourn would be in order. Move to adjourn, Stocker. Is there a second? Jacobs will second. Thank you. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay, we stand adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank Have you.